Philosophy of Instructional Design. Welcome to my thoughts on learning theories, online delivery, and the state of the education industry. Learning is going to change dramatically in the next two decades. The face-to-face -face classroom will become a luxury while the variety of formal and informal online learning will grow exponentially. This will allow our society to apply existing knowledge, add to it, and facilitate our individual and group learning circumstances. My goal is to apply my skills in an environment that supports creativity, creates a quality product, and leads learners to success. One of my objectives is to instruct students who are engaged and invested in their own learning. One benefit to teaching fine arts is that there are established methods of instruction that have been tested over generations in different cultures. When I first started teaching, that is how I taught my students, the way I had been taught, or basing the new digital techniques on those established systems. I find that cause and effect research to validate the changes and adjustments in curriculum over time is important. A recent research project included surveys, grade comparisons, and other correlations to determine that videos helped students learn how to sculpt. The nature of fine art is supported by the domains and levels of Bloom's taxonomy. The constructivist theory also applies with some parts of the cognitive theory. An interesting use of Vatsky's zone of proximal development is as a tool to get past initial protests. Not unlike throwing a child into a pool to learn to swim, with all the materials provided and some direction, students will have a sculpture four hours later. The students are often surprised by what they can produce in a short amount of time with a new medium. Bloom's domains are applicable to fine art instruction by using the cognitive, psychomotor, and effective domains. The cognitive domain is shown by needing to remember specific names, anatomy structures, formulas for paints, chemistry for printing, uh, among some of the examples. The psychomotor domain is demonstrated by the ability to manipulate physical materials into objects that are not only visually appealing, but have some meaning as well. That meaning is often part of the affective domain, the ability to feel and relate and communicate as evidenced by the piece of artwork created. I believe technology will change education significantly and the loss of traditional classrooms to online courses. I can see that most of what I do in class can be replicated in an online environment. The rest can be accommodated by use of tools to communicate with the course participants. I can see how it would suit the students better and I know I would rather instruct to active, engaged learners. Use of multimedia in online learning is a benefit to the student allowing for multiple intelligences and learning paces. Accommodating multiple intelligences is easier online. My skill set, creating interactive multimedia experiences, videos, illustrations, and information graphics is very useful in creating online courses. The use of rubrics to establish expectations and standards can be used directly in online learning. The usual critique can be implemented in a peer review. The use of self-tests for memorization and factual information is a perfect combination. Professional growth has already improved by applying the concepts I have learned in the courses in my classroom. I hope to apply more of that knowledge in an online environment. While we all have dreams of excelling in our profession, sometimes that journey is difficult and stressful. The truth is more likely that I'll be very busy applying a unique set of skills and will discover a niche in the industry.